Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over a versatile tool that I found a couple of weeks ago and I see that it's very useful and um, I believe that you can also use it depending on your needs and the project that you're working on and it's called Windows Exploit Suggester Next Generation and here it is the official uh, github repo i'm gonna put it in the, in the um video description for you to look into but what i like uh, what i like about this tool is that you're going to be able to run it against a uh, file that you are going to generate on your windows computer with the system information so um the download and installation is super simple uh here's the command to install it you're gonna you're gonna need pip for that once you need pip that's gonna be installed in the uh, local that bin directory on your system profile so you would have to either edit the path or run the um, executable from there so if I show you So it's gonna uh, the default location is gonna be here. So either you edit the path or you go directly to this location to run the file. And once you um, install it for the first time, the first thing you need to do you need to update that the uh, the file to download the latest um, definitions with the sw switch minus u, and that's gonna download the latest definitions as you see here. So Pretty much what this is doing for us, and kudos to to the team who developed and maintains this um, tool, is that you're gonna be able to access the Microsoft Vulnerability Catalog, that database, and compare the result of your system against that, and then you're gonna the tool is gonna allow you to specify unique criteria of what you're looking for. For instance, if you're looking for vulnerabilities that have known exploits or vulnerabilities that fall within certain categories like remote code execution or if they have a, um, a, a different criteria that you would like to use. So let me get into it and you'll see how it makes sense and hopefully you're gonna be able to use. Something that I already have on my system that I didn't show you is that I already have the files that I'm going to be working with. So on my Windows computers, right, I I generated, I, I ran sysinfo and I exported the results of that to a file and this is what you see here. I'm going to be using Windows 10 and Windows at 19 as an example so if I do cat win 10 uh, okay cat it's cat so let me go back here you'll see that this is pretty much the output of the system information command on Windows there's nothing to it but what the tool is going to be showing what Wes is going to be showing or Windows Exploitation Suggester. They're going to be looking into this section of the hat fixes and whatever patches are installed on that computer or are being reported as installed on the computer. So let me uh, do it again uh, on Windows, on my Windows server. And as you could see that right here. So Wes is going to be looking at this information. It's going to compare this information with the Windows catalog. And then if it's missing anything for the specific operating system that we're working with, which is this right here. So it's going to be looking into the operating system version that we have. It's going to be looking at the patches and the, um, and the uh, updates that are installed. And then it's going to tell us hey listen based on this information that has been collected and the the application is comparing that against the uh, windows catalog it's going to give us results saying 
this computer is vulnerable to this, this, and this, and this. So the way I see this and the way I've been using this is for audits on individual systems or a handful of systems, especially if you don't have a more sophisticated uh, tool. This is a pretty simple tool that you can use and it's lightweight. I mean, it's super simple to use and run. So let's do a couple of examples. So again, like right here, I downloaded the uh, system information uh, output from my Windows 10 and my Windows Server 2019 uh, computers. And I already have that here. That's a simple process. Just, just do system information uh, greater than, and you're gonna send it output, you know, send that output to a file, and then you download it to your computer that you're gonna be running this from. So what we're gonna be doing from here, remember the first thing you need to do is update the um, update the file, right? You're gonna update the definitions. And as you could see, these are the definitions, the definitions that are gonna be downloaded to the folder where you run the update from. Something interesting you have to keep in mind is that when you install it, as I mentioned to you earlier, that's gonna be installed in the local for slash bin folder of your profile. And when you update that file from there, uh, when you update, I'm sorry, the definitions from there, those definitions are gonna be downloaded to that existing, to that current folder. But if you update the path and then you wanna run it from any other location, you have to also do the update to download the definitions to that specific location you want to run it from just that something to keep in mind so let me give you an example of what the tool does um first of all you know like any other tool you can get help on the help menu so this is what you have you have a couple of examples you have a couple of switches and it tells you what what it does for you is pretty you know pretty simple pretty stra straightforward so the first thing that we're going to do here is um, we're going to do WES and we're going to do Win 10, which is the output on my Windows 10 system information computer and, um, just hit enter. So let's do that and see what happens here. So as you could see, it's loading the definition and it's saying, you know what? It's missing six patches and it's showing, uh, the information right here displaying 116 of 116 vulner vulnerabilities found. So let's just check a couple of the results for one of the vulnerabilities. So in this case, let's say, let's pick um, this one right here, right? That's uh, CVE 2021 43883. So it says that it is, look at the severity, it is important, and the type or impact of the vulnerability is that it, you know, if, ex if it gets exploded, it's gonna yield um, elevation of privileges, right? And then this is the title and this is the system affected. But as you could see, I have multiple vulnerabilities and maybe you wanna, um, you want to narrow your search instead of searching for everything. And you may say, you know what? I don't care about the important things. I just care about the critical things. You know, you wanna see, you know, like things that are super important for you at any given time. So in that case, you're gonna use um, minus S which is gonna stand for, if you come right here, uh, for the severity, so you see important, but in this case, we're gonna use critical. And let's see, it says that it needs, oh, I messed up the syntax. So let me do it again. Minus S, critical. And as you could see, I'm gonna be narrowing the search just on those specific critical vulnerabilities, right? As you could see, this is critical, this is critical, and the impact is remote code, remote code execution, blah, blah, blah. And, um, but what about if you wanna search for the vulnerabilities that have known exploits? Because to me, that would have a higher criteria that only critical because it could be critical. Now, if we evaluate one of these vulnerabilities that is critical right here, according to this, right? So let's go to Google. Shoot. Let 
me come here and do a search on this. And here's the uh, vulnerability, right? And it is a high vulnerability, but does it have an exploit? Uh, known exploits. It doesn't look like it has a known exploit to it, right? So in that case, yes, you have to define your own patch management solution or follow whatever policy or procedure you have in place. But then if you do a switch A, E, right? That's gonna look for vulnerabilities that have a, as you could see, now it's only two out of 16 vulnerabilities found. And this is one of them, look at this, Windows Print Spooler Remote Code Execution, and there are known vulnerabilities for uh, for that, right? So if we click here, if it's gonna do it, you'll see that it's gonna give you information about uh, the exploit that it is available for that vulnerability. So that's what I find useful for you to, to run. Now I could do the same thing for my Windows uh, Server 2019 um, output. And that's gonna, if, if it finds something, it's gonna you know, show it to me. And in this case, I found uh, some uh, vulnerabilities that are available for that exploitation. And in this case, it matches because we have uh, an exploit and the severity is critical. As you could see, this is a very useful tool for you to use. Like in this case, I wouldn't use it in the whole enterprise because it's not as scalable, but if you're performing audits, if you are performing an audit on one specific system, or if you want to do uh, OS hardening or something like that, this is something that definitely comes handy and is super simple to use, lightweight, and it it offers, uh, it, it could be another tool within your toolbox to do what you need to do. So I'm going to stop the video right here. I hope you found this information useful. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, just go to the um, official page and the information, there's not much information here because the tool does what it's supposed to do. It's very simple to use, just know what switches to use, what uh, options to use, and you're going to get the desired re results, and it is a free tool. So thank you for watching. If you found this information useful, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel, click on the like button, leave a nice comment, that's good karma, and I have another set of videos on vulnerability, vulnerability assessments and security that may be interesting to you as well. I'll talk to you on the next video.